Good spot. Mm -hmm. Better now that the bill is blue. <laughs> Is it actually yellow leaf tea, or does it just say that? Real McCoy. Where's my gun? That's all. Thanks. I thought I'd uh, take the opportunity to uh, give you a rundown on the, the new setup. But more recently, we've put the addition of the camper and the storage module on the back, so the canopy and the camper. So I thought I'd just take a few moments and uh, show you around. It's a great spot to be doing it. We've got an awesome, uh, awesome view out here. We're just sitting underneath the summit of Mount Valencia. We're looking down off the side here. Uh, looking east, great sunrise this morning down into the Wanangatta River. Uh, a bit of smoke haze around. It is autumn. A um, bit of fuel reduction burning going on. It's certainly been a a long time in the making. I guess it's a it's an evolutionary thing. Um, but anyway, this is where we're at. And we'll have a look at it. Obviously one of the things when you've got the camper set up on a truck or on a vehicle um, and you rock into a site, you try and orientate to get the, the right aspect, try and orientate to get the, the vehicle level or, or the right um, angles. And obviously you're sleeping in the vehicle so you've got to get the, the bed and everything set up. So in order to do that this time I've had to throw the max tracks under this this back wheel here and that just cocked the wheel up nicely and um, leveled it all out so simple multiple use for the one um, product Oh, well, we'll jump straight into it. So <clears throat> we've got basically two modules on the back of the truck. Uh, the front module at 600 deep, that's a fixed module. The plan is that will stay there um, ongoing. And then the camper, at this point back, 1800 long footprint on the tray. That's removable both for storage and for use so that we can unbolt it, put the legs on, jack it up, drive the truck out from underneath and have it all set up to camp in or to store and we don't need it. So, nice big gullwing doors, um, storage laid out, for, sort of thought about a bit for what we want. So we have a, a ladder that slides in here, set of steps, high steps and uh, that just helps us set the whole show up and now uh, we've got a few other bits and pieces in here our fire pit and our Osbry and uh, we keep our three chairs in there 
so they're always in the storage module which is always on the truck so it doesn't matter whether we're out and about just for a day trip or um, poking around we don't need the camper we've still got some of those basic bits and pieces we've got power in here we've got lighting here colored lights white mixture yellow um, all that sort of stuff um, what else have we got in here there's a little trick here so we've got a little um, system in under here we'll pull this out we've got a nice big platform there to um, work off stand on the workbench another sort of flat table space but um, the main function of this is that we can um, get me steps out of there I can put me steps in there I won't do it now as I clobber myself on the head there but I can climb up in there and access up there is the wood box and um, we can put our firewood up there throw it back down all standing on top of that so it's a great setup and that will go out either side um, have it on the driver's side or the passenger side and uh, yeah we just want nice big space to work on uh, it's like another table really pull up a few bar stools welcome to Archie's bar and now you have a cup of coffee box in there it doesn't rattle and then a uh, clever little system there that folds down stops it coming out and then when you shut this so in travel it's not going to work its way out the side so obviously we've already got the kitchen module is already slid out so what we've done this time is we've gone with a standard off-the-shelf component, a clear view accessories um, kitchen module on the clear view drop-down slide. And the reason we've done that is because the tray height on the truck is pretty high. Um, anything that would be you know, your standard camper kitchen setup would have you working up too high. Well, that's what we felt anyway. We're not necessarily you know, all that tall, some of us. So, you know, we wanted to get the kitchen down as low as possible. So there's the stove height. You know, that's perfect. Cooked in that last night on the pan and the billies. So that's ideal. And then a little bit of a workbench there. Um, yeah, for those that are not familiar with clear view, they retract. I can pack up the stove I've got a couple of straps set up and got lashed down there which you've got the gas disconnected and the whole lot then pivots over and uh, lifts up retracts back into the, the cavity and uh, simple quick you know want to have a bit of brew on the road lunch or whatever make a sandwich it's easy to do um, yeah a little bit of fiddling around with the gas you've got to get the bottle out and all right still uh, everything's a compromise but works quite well and we might look at a bit of a storage solution for the gas bottle got a spot under the tray that we might be able to utilize and get a longer hose work in progress at this end we've got the uh you know, we've using the angle 40 liter fridge so that would normally lock for transit transit and do that Pull those two levers, this slides out, locks in place, fridge, a little bit sticky at the moment we've noticed, so that's, um, you know, lid folds right open, good access into the fridge, so we've got the angle 40, we've had that for a long, long time, and uh, pretty tough bit of gear, simple lash down solution. Um, we've got another um, the medic 28 liter in the front in the cab um, between the front seats because we can. So that uh, pretty simple system that locks in. Just give it a 
little bit of a mess there. So that's all fits in there quite nicely. Another little bit there that we've got. Uh, we've got a 50 litre drinking water, gravity fed, a um, little bit of a sight glass in here so we can work out the, the levels of the water uh, in the tank. And so there's 50 litres there. And under the tray, we've got another 120 litres in two 60 litre tanks. And they're independent of the camper. <clears throat> so up here, you'll notice that we've got the uh, Red Arc Manager 30 battery monitor. And 91% um, full at the moment. That's We've been here since uh, dinner time last night. So... Um, you know, it's just starting to get a bit of sun on the panels now, so that's starting to charge up three hours until it's full under the current conditions. But anyway, the Manager 30, it's tucked away in a nice little cabinet up here with some uh, all the fuse boxes and uh, bits and pieces. Multiple power outlets there, um, 12 volt USB, all that sort of stuff. Um, look, pretty simple, out of the way. Uh, Manager 30 does a great job. We've got 240 that it can run on. We're packed up it in the shed just to keep your battery cycling over. We've also got a 250 watt panel. Um, can't remember the right terminology. Some high tech bit of gear on the roof of the camper there, 250 watt. And um, that seems to pump a lot of power into the system and that's obviously running through the manager 30 and uh, the main um, the backbone of the power system is the um, revolution or resolution one of those not really up on the the names on some of the gear but pretty high end uh, I think it's a hundred amp might be 120 I'm pretty sure it's a hundred amp battery lithium lithium ion so, the camper has got its own water and its own power, completely independent, its own charging. It does run on the um, alternator if necessary. When we're on the road, it will charge from the alternator as well. And this front module here, it's run by the car, the truck. So it's got its own power supplied from the truck um, and it's its own water. The, the truck has its own water as well. Um, so we've got a switch a distribution board up here, fuse board, and power outlets on both sides of the module as well as in the truck. We've got lighting on both doors, going doors, um, as well as some floodlights outside for lighting up camp or works area. We've got um, 120 litres of water plumbed in under the tray, two 60 litre tanks. A uh, little pump there to keep that running and, um, and that's all independent of the camper. Also in the truck we've got a 120 amp hour lithium ion battery run off a Red Arc DC DC 1240D something like that. We'll take the solar anyway. That's all in the cab there under the back seat. Plenty of room there, we'll have a look at that later. So what that's done is, and I've said it before, that completely independent systems. The truck, power and water on its own, camper, power and water on its own. And that seems to be a good way forward. So in terms of storage in the kitchen side of the module, the camper, sorry, module, camper, um, we've got a couple of large slide out drawers. The bottom one has been earmarked as a, a pantry so we can get a fair bit of tucker in there it's been made deep enough to handle a full size box one kilo box of uh vita bricks <laughs> anyway got to be able to store the things you carry so tucker in the bottom one there and they've got good little secure latches and the top one is uh is our pot drawer so we've got the camp oven uh, frying pan, we carry a couple of billies there, the uh, uh, jaffa irons, uh, you know, the toaster for the gas cooker, uh, billy hooker, uh, so they all sit up in there. So what we did there, just 
you know, that's obviously getting pretty high. I'm six foot, and so that's pretty high. You'd never see in there. So we relieved the sides of the drawer so that you can actually see and things can't come out. So, uh, yeah, we just reduced the sides of the drawer height so that we can makes it easier access, easier to see what's going on there. So that's uh, the pot drawer. And then there's a series of uh, uh, oats, plastic drawers up the top here, utensils. Uh, just some of those handy bits and pieces there. An important one, the tea and coffee uh, station. Uh, and, uh, you know, storage, cutlery and that sort of stuff. You can put a bit of tucker in there. We've got just up in the top here, this um, undoes and this retainer. And we've got our um, uh, easy on um, table, stainless steel table. It's a pretty tight fit there. Probably could have been a little bit more clearance there, but it won't rattle. Um, so we can flip that out, turn it up very easily and uh, have the kitchen cooking areas or dining areas. It's a simple retainer system. It stops it wandering out. Up here, a bit more storage. We've got our all important thermos up there on the top here we carry a couple of washing up basins and uh, collapsible bucket and i think there's a shower tent up there there's a i don't know what's up there i can't see but uh, just storage no shortage of storage fire extinguisher in the corner there i'm going to do another one in the cab um, probably sooner rather than later easily accessible um, so we'll have a look at the, the back end now. So at this end of the, the build is the uh, the accommodation um, quarters. So we've got a nice uh, sturdy retractable ladder and uh, that finds its own home in a, in a cavity within the, the rear tailgate. And we'll have a look at all the, the workings of how it all works a bit later on. Um, so yeah, nice one, two, three, four, five steps good handrail there that we could put on either side um, simple system um, you can extend the step length depending on the terrain um, that you, you set up on interestingly and we didn't know but until last night in the dark there's some little um, strips in each step that glow in the dark so when you you know if you're going to go out for a wander during the night or when you had enough for the day and you're going to bed you've got nice little uh, reflective or no glow into dark strips on the steps so you can define each of those treads so um, what we might do is we'll pop up inside and have a look at how all that setup works so obviously most of you know, the canvas the rear half and the, the top half's canvas with a solid roof over the, the main bed area. So we've got a mesh door, we've got a canvas door, all nice and uh, weatherproof and insect proof. Some massive um, you know, window flaps that open up and get great ventilation right through the whole system. Windows all around, windows up high. Um, you've got a little uh, switch under here which when you pop up the stairs you can turn the the lights on makes it a bit easy to see what you're doing and then those lights also turn off when you get into bed you another switch there the other end a two-way switch um, this is probably a function that um, is quite unique for this style of camper is that we've actually got an extendable um, tailgate or floor extends two feet 600 mil and then has its own vestibule uh, effectively a room, an independent room that we've currently got opened up here but um, we could zip all this up and have a little private space in there but it's main, it's a bed, so it's, it's still accommodate a third person so you've got a queen size bed up the top here and then you've got uh, a third um, space for another bed and we might have a look at rigging up a stretcher just to elevate that bed a little bit at the moment we've just got a couple of self-inflating uh, hike mats there or we might put a nice foam mattress or something in there time will tell plenty of ventilation there and um, that young bloke the lad sleeps in there um, but we've got plenty of room to carry swag too if he wants that um, in the right certain places 
Um, but yeah, that was important that the whole camper will accommodate three people. And uh, look, I mean, in a in a storm, you could put other people in. There's plenty of room. The floor is about uh, you know, 1,200 wide, the hard floor. Um, so you know, in theory, you could put another couple of people on uh, camp rests in there. So what we've done is we we need to carry a set of steps. Um, for setting it up, you know, it's quite high the roof height when the thing's all packed down and uh, you're traveling So I need to carry a set of steps to be able to reach up high there uh, undo the latches and things and Obviously the bed height is quite high. So you need to be able to get up there and you know We could have had built-in steps and things but that gets a bit complicated because of the overhang But um, we've come up with this little effectively lightweight set of stairs nice little handhold there you can climb up where it's bed height and uh, easy to get in and out and it serves multiple purposes so uh, you know once again that old adage multiple use for the one thing so we've got a um, inner spring mattress with a two inch pillow top um, built in on the mattress nice uh, four season doona uh, you know a couple of good pillows and all fits in there and we can put the rest of the bedding um, the third person the young bloke's bedding up there as well and um, you know we talked about <coughs> ventilation and today's probably a good day to have so they fold down there plenty of window space Windows, airflow, um, awesome. I'll take my hat off while I'm in bed. It's not decorum to have your hat on while you're in bed. And I've got my boots on, so I'll be careful there too. Plenty of airflow there. More on the back, more up there. Uh, look, heaps of ventilation and airflow. Um, we've got power points up the back here on both sides, uh, USB 12 volt, and uh, also reading lamps built in to the either side, and then the main strip light up here as well. The ceiling itself up here on the canvas work is insulated, um, just you know, above your head there. This is all insulated and uh, no heat coming in there at all so it's uh that's pretty good isn't it so nice and cozy is it really camping <laughs> you could argue either way i guess anyway so what there is also is obviously a bit of canvas work um you know it collapses down when you pack it all up it's all on gas struts and everything the two roofs um but you know the canvas does sort of fold in and if it was wet when you're packing up there is a big drop sheet if you like that goes over the bed here i just have it rolled up next to the bed here just another sheet of canvas um, and it just sits over the top so any of that damp canvas when it's folded up is not in contact with your bed um yeah that's um what else can i tell you about up here uh, pretty good plenty of room under uh, either side to store a bit of gear put your book your water bottle that sort of stuff your hooks and rings and things to hang bits and pieces up uh, clothes line there just to hang uh, anything up overnight that you want to keep dry dry your towel or whatever and then under the bed here there's uh, three uh, 40 litres or thereabouts for yeah. drawers storage boxes um, they sit in there and that's where you put your uh, personal clobber, put your clothes, whatever. And that's um, retained for transport with a little, a little bungee strap. So they sit in there nicely. And uh, there's a lot of space under here there that, that I'm wondering if we can utilise. Uh, yeah, it's a nice know, canvas pockets or something for... You know, slipping our shoes, footwear in, just clears the floor, opens up the floor, and 
removes that tripping hazard. Work in progress. We've also got this big strap here, which clips into the floor, and then that's um, we use the winch, which I haven't shown you about. We use the winch to lift the tailgate up when we're packing up or setting up. I talked earlier before, um, before about um, the steps. They all fold up and retract into a little cavity there. There's a door. Here's a uh, great little setup here. So this is another little door. Um, folds down. Awesome cavity there. Made to be able to accommodate and um, transport the, the max tracks. So four max tracks fit in there easily. And uh, they wedge in nicely. They don't rattle around. A little retainer that goes over the end. That's, uh, that cavity is actually um, completely sealed from anything else here. So if you know, you've got muddy tracks or sandy tracks you put in there, you can uh, hose it all out, clean, keep it all clean. So good, good uh, utilization of space. We'll take a quick look at this side. It'll be a bit glary. Sunshine on there. Opens up nicely. Once again, you've got lighting there. Um, swag sitting there at the moment. Um, crush pad swag, we carry the gas bottle in there at the moment. Um, underneath here you've got, well, we've got three, I don't know what they are, 50 litre tubs or thereabouts. Um, they slide out, I've got um, vehicle parts and servicing bits and pieces in there. One of those boxes has got all the, uh, the canvas work that we haven't looked at yet, but all the canvas work for the camper, awnings, walls, that sort of stuff outside. Um, here we've got a, a rack set up there, custom rack for uh, accommodating all the, the legs, the, the jack off legs. Um, and they're all, you know, they don't rattle, they're bloody all mounted in there solid. And um, yeah, that's got their own home there. Uh, up the front there, we've got the Revolution uh, battery there. Deep cycle lithium iron, uh, 100 amp hour or thereabouts. More power points there, 12 volt and uh, USB. Um, 12.4. Could just be 12 volts on this side. Just 12 volts on this side. Um, there's the water tank in there, 50 litre, filling point for the water tank. More storage up the top here. Is it a shower tent? Water tent. Bits and pieces up there, more storage over there. A couple of um, extra legs here, uh, customised so that when we've got the camper set up off the truck, um, there's obviously a lot of leverage beyond this uh, last back leg there, so um, we've got these little legs that go under the back props if you like go right up up under the bank back and stop any uh, falling over work out a way to store them one day at the moment they're just rattling around but, um, well, yeah. pretty simple but to be honest I haven't got much more to put in here my couple of fishing rods and tackle bag and you know goggles and snorkel that sort of stuff you know, a few toys you might say so you know yeah, no shortage of room. The trick will be not to fill it. Because then it'll start getting pretty heavy, I'm sure, if it's full. What more can I say about that side? So over this side, another go wing door. Watch yourself, you don't get taken out with them. So, once again, this... Um, Shelf underneath there, or the platform pulling out this side as well. You know, glow in the dark strips, as we found out last night. Just nests in there nicely. Lock there, stop it coming out. Power, lighting. This uh, this space has been kept deliberately open. Um, so this is actually a big enough access um, to be able to accommodate one of the, the another wheel the sixth spare or the second spare sixth wheel uh, so these are 37 37 13 and a half 17 wheel tire package so it takes a fair bit I think it's uh 900 mil or 
thereabouts um, diameter. Yeah. They can fit in here, up against the front wall there, there's lashing points there to secure it in. Pretty heavy though, I think each wheel's about 68 kilo, 65, 68 kilo, so it's a bit heavy for me, but I could use this platform, make a ramp, you know, roll it up, roll the wheel up, a couple of people. Anyway, so that'll secure in there, so if I need to carry that second spare, um, that's where I'll do it, it's up front, gets the weight forward. Oh, it's the shortest day of the year today, and I think it's shaping up to be the coldest day of the year as well. So it's probably not surprising. Um, middle of winter. So there you go, that was a quick walk around of our Iveco Daily four-wheel drive Ultra Tourer. So this episode obviously concentrated on the, the accommodation, the camping side of things. We'll do another run through of the truck itself down the track. Um, there's a lot of interest in this type of vehicle. Um, they're a little bit unique. And, uh, they've got a bit of a niche where they fit into the, uh, the whole gamut of off-roading, touring, four-wheel driving. So we'll, we'll run through that in a later video. But yeah, this one obviously concentrated on the accommodation, the camper, um, not long ago built for us. It was a, an awesome project to be involved with. Um, the team at Jackson's uh, Carry Me Camper, they were awesome to work with and uh, yeah, appreciate all their efforts. And uh, now our challenge will be to get out and enjoy it. And um, yeah, we're about to head off and put it through its paces so hopefully we'll see some uh, some uh, videos coming up in the not too distant future on uh, the truck out in the out in the deserts and a bit of coastal stuff and yeah we're looking forward to that so hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up make drop a comment down below always appreciate reading what people have got to say happy to answer questions and um, yeah, if you like what you see, follow along. We'll be out and about, um, poking around in the bush as we do. A few great um, trips planned. Just got back from a very exciting trip for the last couple of months and working on the, the video from that. So that'll come out. Now, it's probably going to be a little while away yet because we're just about to head off on another two, three months trip. Um, and I don't really have capability to work on the videos on the road I'd rather do the filming and enjoy the trip so there could be a little bit of a break between now and the next video um, so be it so that's how it is that's how we roll <laughs>